Greetings, scholars. Decided I'd be a little comfortable for this video and just sit down. We're going to be talking about composite functions in this section. Now, I could give you some big, long, complicated, confusing explanation of what a composite function is. But really all it boils down to is when the output of one function becomes the input of another function. So in our opening activity, you spent some time actually doing composite functions probably without realizing it. And it's actually called function cups because when I use it in the classroom, we actually have some little visual aids to help us figure this out. Now you probably remember from when we discussed functions and relations how we had those little cups. Well, I have some more. They should look familiar to you. We've got one that says f of x equals 2 times x. We have another, which is g of x equals x plus 1. These should look familiar to you because they were the ones we actually used in that opening activity. And our cubes should look familiar to you as well because they are our x's. So what happens in a composite function is this. For instance, if I'm starting with my f of x and I want to input I want to input an x of 1. What comes out? The f of x. But now I can take that f of x and put it in to the g of x. And a new result comes out. I could reverse it even. Instead, I could start with the g of x. I've got my x. I plug it in. What comes out? g of x. And for a composite function, what can I do? Put it into my other function. So the output of one function becomes the input of the other. Now we combine functions in some ways using our operations in the previous section, but if we've got a lot of problems to do, we actually want to do our own composite function. Write it out so we can evaluate it many times. So I actually want to take those equations we had so that you can see what a final composite function would look like. Oh, that's too light. Let's switch to black. Let's write an equation for f of x, f of g of x. Now, if you remember, f of x is 2x. Now, what I suggest as a way to kind of visualize this, if you can't see it, is go ahead and write f of x, the outside equation, but instead of the x, write a box. In that box, write the g of x, x plus 1. So now that I have that written, come down below it and drop the box, but instead put parentheses. Now I do this so that I can see when I get to the step, I actually need to simplify this. I need to do distributive property. Multiply the 2 by the x and the 2 by the 1. To get f of g of x equaling 2x plus 2. So I can now evaluate this for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, etc. And I don't have to keep on doing those separately, calculating g and calculating f. Because what you did in the opening activity, you were actually doing them separately, but then plugging it into the equation. So let's switch this around. Let's instead do g of x first. and f of x inside. So now I look at g of x, the outside one. g of x is x plus 1. But with my little method to help you see it, not x, I'm going to put the box. 
and then x plus 1, or box plus 1. Now inside the box, the f of x, I'm going to write it inside of that, 2x. Now we might not really need to do this next step, but just so you can see why we did this. Put parentheses instead of the box. Is there actually anything to do to this? Not really. So I'm just going to drop the parentheses. So that I can now see the difference of here where I did not have distributive property I had to do versus here where I did have distributive property I had to do. That box helped me figure out when I needed to do that. So, do remember, what is inside, even though you're writing it second, in the scheme of the composite function, it is actually occurring first. That is important when we're dealing with word problems. So that I'm actually figuring out the output of f of x first, and then plugging in into g of x. Here, I'm figuring out the output of g of x, then plugging into f of x. So don't get confused by that, even though you write what occurs first, second. But in word problems, you do want to keep that in mind. This occurs first, and then it goes into the set, uh, outside one. So go ahead and check your answers to the opening activity, and then proceed forward through uh, the examples and practice problems. Good luck, scholars.